Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we've got something a little bit different. We're actually going to be recreating a real life coaster. Now there's a YouTube channel by the name of Hard Hack Gaming. Um, his name's Andrew. He, uh, he started his YouTube channel around about the same time as me in April or May last year. And uh, I'm a really big fan of his. He, he primarily plays in OpenRCT2 and RCT Classic. Uh, he also has been uh, delving into a few other games of late, but primarily focuses on Roller Coaster Tycoon. He's got a few park build series on his channel. He does this uh, series where he does like these mini scenery only maps, which are really fun. He does viewer suggested ride designs. He's also got some great tips and tricks videos, primarily focusing on scenery and how to make your parks look more realistic and just generally better. We, uh, we've been wanting to do kind of a collaboration of sorts and this is more kind of an exercise I suppose as opposed to a collaboration but what we wanted to do was uh, do a recreation of a real life coaster. Uh, we were discussing a few options um, but we ended up choosing Blue Streak at Cedar Point, Ohio. Uh, it's a nice and simple layout to kind of copy and uh, yeah we thought we'd start with this one and see if we enjoyed it and you know we might do some more in the future, who knows. So we both had a go at doing a recreation of the coaster. Uh, we each did our own kind of recording and video. Uh, and the aim was to just link each other's video in the description below. So you can find uh, Hard Hat Gaming's uh, recreation in the link in the description. So after you watch mine, make sure you go and check his uh, recreation out as well. Um, so yeah, Cedar Point. Blue Streak's one of the older coasters there. I, I think it might be the oldest one in the park currently. It was built in 1964. It's uh, kind of a uh, simple out and back layout. There's nothing, nothing too spectacular about it. Um, apparently, it's really popular with those who like the uh, airtime side of things. Um, it's got a few really, like uh, I think it's three or four really decent looking airtime hills. I haven't ridden it myself. I uh, I watched many YouTube videos, like uh, point of view videos, which uh, helped me kind of dictate how I would build the layout in RCT. Even even with that, I did struggle a little bit with some elements. I mean, doing a uh, real life or a recreation of a coaster in Roller Coaster Tycoon, it, it really highlights the kind of, uh, not weaknesses, but I guess the limitations of, um, of, of this game. I mean, there's there's lots of kind of fine angles which you can't really can't really uh, emulate in the game. For example, even the even the drop. I think it's 45 degrees in real life, but in the game here, it's you either choose between the really shallow or really steep drops. So you know, it was it was hard to kind of find the balance at times. Uh, the other thing was about halfway through the layout or halfway through to the to the turnaround. There's a little change in direction. As uh, I'd say, just eyeballing it, it's like five or ten degrees. It's it's enough that you notice it, but it's not enough that you should use the uh, diagonal track in in the game. So it's I don't know. I kind of just uh, ignored that kink in the track and just went for a straight, predominantly straight uh, layout. I think it was the most suitable. Um, yeah, it's basically a game of compromises, but I think it worked out okay in the end. I also had to take some liberties with the with the drops. Um, I kind of used the technique where I use a couple shallow pieces and then the steep bit and then a couple more shallow pieces to kind of uh, stretch it out a little bit and uh, I think it you know it's uh, it's about as close as, as you can get to getting the that overall 45 degree uh, shape. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I've, uh, enough about the layout itself, um, let's get into the station building. So uh, getting the getting the station building done was probably the thing I spent the most time on. Um, I watched, again, a lot of videos on YouTube, um, looked, as, looked at as many pictures as I could on uh, just on Google and stuff, and I think I did a reasonable job of uh, replicating the station. I realized kind of at the end of recording that I got the exit path uh, kind of wrong. I think the riders actually go like they're basically going the wrong side of the station to get out. Um, but you know, whatever. I just kind of left it as it was. Um, yeah, the station building in real life is actually really simple. It's nothing too exciting at all. But um, I took ages to kind of settle on 
what I ended up with. Obviously, I got rid of the default paths and uh, like using the tile inspector and replaced it just with the base blocks. Um, I think it looked okay. I mean, then ideally, I'd want to get something a little bit more like I think it's all wood inside. Um, so I probably could have gone with the wooden base block instead. With the track inside, you probably noticed that it's uh, I replaced the default wooden track with the side friction coaster. Now, what I wanted to try and kind of emulate there was the fact that within the station building of, of the coaster here, the track is somewhat a part of the floor. Like there's no, it doesn't have the railings, the, the typical railings like the rest of the layout. So I kind of want, wanted the track to be look like it was embedded within the floor. And I think it I think it turned out, turned out all right, actually. I kind of had to play around with the base blocks and the tile inspector because it was glitching a fair bit. So I just had to spend a bit of time reordering elements in uh, using the, yeah, the tile inspector. So that took a little bit of time, but yeah, happy with the result. Uh, you probably saw as well that I put the little transfer track on the left. Um, it's not <laughs> in the game here. It's not actually large enough to uh, store one of the trains, but you know, it was uh, it was obviously just for aesthetic purposes that I did that. So uh, the roof of the building that was something I was le less happy with. You're kind of limited with the with the grey roof pieces, with the grey tiled roof pieces. It's like uh, it's not easy to do the multi-angled roof. So I kind of just had to go with a compromise and you know do the best I could. <laughs> the, the flags on top are kind of a uh, a bit laughable, but I uh, I tried to use the flags from the um, I think it was the medieval set or the uh, whatever the, I think it was the Robin Hood set or the Dark Ages expansion pack set, but they just weren't really working out and they kind of looked a little bit ridiculous actually. I mean these ones look pretty ridiculous, but whatever. I was uh, I was happy enough with them. So yeah, just uh, going around now and starting to do a bit of decoration. With the detailing around the coaster, I kind of went super detailed in some areas and not so detailed in others. It was it was kind of tricky to find a balance. Um, I spent a lot of time on the lift hill. Um, so as you can see right now, I'm adding in some uh, extra kind of railings to the to the side. Um, on the coaster, if you if you watch a point of view uh, video of it, you notice that the the railings are quite high. And it's almost double stacked, and uh, yeah, that, that's what I was kind of going for there. They actually seem to go most of the length of the coaster, but I really couldn't be bothered doing that, so I just did the lift hill. And uh, yeah, I think it looks decent. Um, the little uh, the little building right at the top, I don't know, it's not really a building, but the the roof at the top, I think that uh, pretty closely follows uh, what's what's in real life. Um, yeah, with the whole queue line, I replaced that again just with uh, base blocks and some uh, basic fencing. Um, that took a long time actually, just replacing every single queue line tile with uh, the invisible element. That took uh, that took a real long time actually. Uh, so yeah, just going through, adding some basic theming around the station. I uh, I was really happy with the front of the station actually. Um, I kind of stacked the uh, signs, the entrance signs, uh, kind of like what it is in reality. You, know, you kind of got the the word blue kind of uh, wedged in with the word streak. Um, so that's why I kind of went with the stacked uh, signs there. The uh, the diagonal track was kind of interesting to work with. In reality, the, the track here connecting the, the main layout with the station, it's a lot longer, but you know, as I touched on before, the limitations with RCT, with the diagonal track here, it's uh, it just meant it was a little bit, sh well, quite a bit shorter than, than real life. But um, I still think it looked kind of, you know, the the actual cover, the station, the extension of the station looked pretty reasonable. I was really happy with uh, using the suspended uh, single rail coaster as the brake run, because yeah. You, can, you can't have a, a brake run on diagonals in RCT, so the suspended swinging coaster I thought would be a good uh, a good addition there because I think it adds just a bit more realism there. 
I also use the giant candy canes as kind of the overhead lights that run along the length of the chain hill. They kind of look a bit uh, probably big, but I thought they were the closest thing I could use to uh, replicating them. That's pretty much the station uh, and, you know, around the entrance of the coast are done. And now we're just getting into, like, you know, uh, the final kind of surroundings of the coaster. I could have done a lot more, but I just kind of went with simple in the end. I uh, I used the uh, prison fences from uh, the, I think it was one of the RCT2 expansion pack sets to uh, as like the, the park boundary. And it actually turned out pretty well. I think they look, you know, like some uh, pretty realistic chain link fences with some barbed wire around the top. I think the barbed wire is a bit more extreme um, in the game than reality, but I thought it looked better than just having the normal mesh fence, the one that I'm using here. So yeah, I was happy with how that turned out. Um, I played around a little bit here with like using using some base blocks again to put in some diagonal road, just because I, you know, as, as I stated earlier in the video, like since I didn't put the change in direction in the coaster, I kind of used the road to, uh, I bumped the road off to the side a little bit because there's this little kind of maintenance area uh, just near the big drop, I'm oh, sorry, the the bigger hill towards the end of the, of the layout. So uh, yeah, that's what I was going for there. Yeah, so we're just finishing off the, uh, the surrounding at the uh, turnaround here. By the end of this I was getting kind of tired and this was taking a lot longer than I originally foresaw, but uh, I was pretty happy with the end result. The, uh, the speakers from, again, the uh, expansion pack set worked quite well. Yeah, I also put some of the uh, more fencing in the turnaround section because quite a lot of videos I saw had some really cool footage in that little, uh, in that pocket uh, in the turnaround. So not that I saw it for myself, but I imagine that there's some sort of pathing there. So I just kind of had a guess at, as to what it would look like. Then I go in and uh, fill out some of the car park. Again, I, I was thinking about doing some cars there, but uh, yeah, yeah, I couldn't kind of couldn't be bothered in the end. But uh, yeah, I put in a little building here, um, just with a few trees and some basic fences around, and kind of the maintenance road. Yeah, the maintenance road was just kind of running the whole uh, border from the car park of the coaster. So yeah, that was pretty much it. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for the video. Thank you guys very much for watching. We're going to finish off with a uh, ride on the coaster. Uh, thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.